Let's talk about my favorite romance reads of last year. Hi everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. The last video I posted before this should be my top 10 books of 2022. But I realized that list was mostly fantasy and I also wanted to talk about my favorite romance reads of the year so now I'm doing my top five romance reads. I will say 2022 is probably the year that I've read the most romance ever. Um, I love romance. I think it's a really great way to kind of just escape from your reality and unwind and I love the genre almost as much as I love fantasy. So I guess I should have maybe had the foresight to make like a separate fantasy and romance list, but I decided to do this after I filmed my top 10 books of the year. Um, so there's one romance book on that list and that is Set on You by Amy Leah. Please go check out my other video to hear more about this, but this list is going to be separate from this because I included this on my regular top 10 list. So just know this holds a very special place in my heart and please go watch that previous video if you want to hear me talk about this book. With that being said, let's get into my top five. Coming in at number five is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I feel like she's an author that is very polarizing. People either love her books or hate her books. Uh, the Love Hypothesis was probably one of my favorite books of last year, and I loved this one too. I think I might like the first one just a little bit better, but I mean, I still loved the heck out of this. Allie Hazelwood is someone that has a PhD in neuroscience and teaches neuroscience. Um, she's a neuroscience researcher, so me being like a STEM girly myself that works in a lab, I think it's important to have someone writing those kinds of lab scenes that knows what goes into being in a lab, otherwise it just wouldn't come across correct to me. That's like they say, don't read something that's like in your field unless you know it's going to be accurate because otherwise it'll just piss you off. Um, but yeah, but Ali Hazelwood does a really good job. So this one is about B and Levi. She's obsessed with Marie Curie, like love Marie Curie. B and Levi worked in the same lab in grad school. It was like a neuroscience lab, although she was a neuroscientist and he was like a shooting neuro person, which you will get that in PhD labs where people have like different specialties. Anyways, so they were in the same lab. He was older than her and she just thought that he hated her. And so now it's post-grad school and B is getting recruited by NASA to work on this really, really cool new innovative project. The only thing is that she will be co-leading the project with Levi, who is her nemesis from grad school. And she kind of has some trouble adjusting to her new environment at NASA in Texas. And Levi is there to kind of help her out. And she realizes that there might be more to their animosity than she thought that there was. So yes, I mean, Another win from Allie Hazelwood, I loved it so much. I feel like it really also highlighted the struggles that you can face as a woman in STEM when men don't take you seriously. Um, it's not something that I've like experienced too often in my field, which I am lucky for, but I have experienced it and I just know how much of like a soul crushing feeling that can be. And so I really loved watching V and Levi's relationship flourish um kind of like in this environment and of course it was just like nerdy and cute and this one was a little bit steamier than her last one so i appreciate the the more steamy scenes but i don't know these books just like they really scratch a certain itch for me because it's in my field it's nerdy like there's so many nerdy science jokes and i basically make nerdy science jokes for a living so i just love it at number four we have king of wrath by anna wong I love Anna Wong. I'm actually on her ARC team and I have just been like obsessed with her books literally since her first book came out, um, Twisted Love. I guess she has some books before that, but anyway, since Twisted Love came out, I've been obsessed with her and I've been on the ARC team since Twisted Hate. So I read Twisted Hate, Twisted Lies, and King of Wrath this year. I loved all of them. I loved all of them, but I think I'm going to have to put King of Wrath in spot number four because it's just so good. So we have... Dante, who is kind of like the CEO of this mega corporation, and then we have Vivian Lau, and her family runs this like jewelry mega corporation as well, and basically Vivian's dad blackmails Dante into marrying his daughter for his own gain, and Vivian just thinks that this is something that's set up by her parents that she has to like go along with. So then they kind of have this like forced marriage proximity arrangement going on, and they kind of like really start off not understanding each other and then they end up you know getting closer <laughs> um but I really loved it I felt like it was fun to have a new set of characters in Anne Huang's world and it's just like glitz and glam I thought Vivian was such like a badass woman and she like really stood up for herself and wouldn't let Dante like kind of 
steamroll her in like certain things that they were dealing with with their families and I just loved that she like really just did, took no shit essentially. Um, she is fantastic. The steam between her and Dante was so good and Dante he was obviously king of wrath in this one so he's like kind of like an angry dude but like in a I'll burn the world for you like touch her and you die kind of angry way and of course I love that. I just love her books. I think that they are like fast paced, fun, and like very spicy in, in a very good way. Very satisfying spice. At number three, we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. I read this entire series this year, like in the beginning of the year in February, and it just put a smile on my face, but I do think that this middle one is my favorite. Danny is in grad school and she knows what she wants. She's going after what she wants and she's like really career driven, but she, you know, isn't thinking about romance at the moment. Then the university security guard Zafir rescues Danny from a fire drill gone wrong and a clip of them goes viral. And so Zaf is begging Danny to help him because he is he's trying to get his charity foundation off the ground um, and the virality is really helping with that. So they start to have this like fake relationship. Things go from there. I thought this book was just so well done because it really deals with the topics of grief and professional burnout like Danny is like so career driven but this book really examines like what happens when you are so career driven that you forget to take care of yourself and that you're just like so stone cold realistic that you don't take the time to have that like optimism and um positive outlook on your life so um I really feel like Zaf was able to help Danny kind of realize that she needs balance in her life that work can't be everything um and also like Zaf is dealing with some like PTSD and grief issues and I just feel like they were tackled with care and I just loved seeing these characters um, take care of one another and help each other break through their barriers. It also has like, you know, the fun fake dating thrown in there and I just, I adore this entire series but definitely this one like has my heart. Okay, next we have The Bully by Sophie Lark. So I read pretty much all of Sophie's mafia books this year. I have a reading vlog that I posted in February that you can go watch. I will link it. But that was so much fun. Sophie's like a really well-known author on TikTok and social media and whatnot. And her books really just like deliver in all of the fun, spicy, heart pounding plot lines ways. So first we have the Brutal Birthright series, which you have to read before the Kingmaker series. And that is six mafia books set in Chicago between the Italian and the Irish mafia families. And then you have like their second generation, their children. And now there's like this academy that the mafias can send their children to to like learn mafia skills. So it's got like that mafia, but also kind of like, um, it almost like a Zodiac Academy kind of feel, like where they're just like all in this like really isolated academy. So it's like not fantasy, but it just has this set aside from the regular world kind of feel. And I loved it. And like, it's like school, but for mafia. So it, there's just so much drama, so much tension between all of the rival families in like one place. And it was amazing. So my favorite one in the series was The Bully by Sophie Lark because Dean Yenin has kind of had like this arc over the whole series so his book is the third but we see him in the first and the second um featured pretty heavily and you know we get to see him kind of he's kind of an anti-hero right like he was the bad guy in the first book and we're kind of seeing him evolving and learning and dealing with his own traumas and then we have Kat who is like this really shy and you know she's like petite so people don't really take her seriously and people think that she was just in the Mafia Academy for her sister but then we kind of learn she has this dark secret and you really learn that she is kind of learning to hold her own in this Mafia world that no one thought that she is cut out for and so basically it is a bully romance because Dean finds out some information about Kat and kind of holds it over her and it goes into very very spicy territory uh, but it it just works so well I've never read a bully romance that I was like fully like okay like this actually makes sense like this works so well but it works so well it was so so spicy and I loved it and it was amazing and I definitely go back and like reread my favorite scenes all the time because it's amazing and if you haven't checked out Sophie Lark yet like please just go read her stuff because if you want spicy mafia like she is the lady to go to. And my number one book for the year is My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I just had so much fun with this book um, and it's also very steamy. 
I loved it. So we have Taylor who's like this very sunshiny second grade teacher and she goes on a vacation to Cape Cod with her brother and in their rental house they find a dead body. And so then they get like wrapped up in this murder investigation and big bad Miles the bounty hunter comes to Cape Cod to like he's kind of hired as a private investigator for the family involved in the murder and she basically like is a true crime junkie and tries to insert herself into the case. So we have spicy romance set to like a rom-com murder mystery kind of thing and it's a very unique intersection of genres so I love that it was like funny but also with the touch of mystery and just like the spice between these two was so good the chemistry was so good Miles is like I can't like you're like it's just not gonna work like he's like kind of afraid of commitment and you know she's just like this sunny woman and like I, I don't know their chemistry just like worked so well also I feel like the self-published version is like it's just so so cute and um all of these books have now all of tessa's self-published books have been acquired by a publisher so they're getting like different covers and i think the rebrand will match her entire brand but i am kind of happy that i still have this cover because i like this cover a lot and i like this like little mini size um but i will probably pick it up in the other edition if you're looking for like a fun what do they call it? like a fun romp like it's a really really good beach read in my opinion all right pals so those are my top five romance reads of the year with like a little bonus alluding to the book in the other video so let me know if you have read any of these books down below and comment your favorite romance read of 2022 i'll see you guys in the next one and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one <laughs>